In this video, we will show you how to install side ventilation without a screen. Here are the parts you'll need. Timber side rails are 47mm by 75mm, commonly known as 3x2, and supplied in lengths of 1.6m, 3.2m, and depending on the length of your polytunnel, you may have also been supplied with lengths of 1.8m. The side rail is fitted 75 centimeters above the base rail from the doorpost to the corner, down the length and returns to the opposite doorpost. It is fitted using the same method as fitting the base rail with corner and intermediate clamps. To get started, measure from the top of the base rail up the hoop and make a mark at 75 centimeters. Fit a corner clamp to the corner hoop. To assemble the corner clamp, place a U-bolt around the corner hoop with the threads pointing towards the inside of the polytunnel. Place the tube pressing and then corner clamp onto the threads, ensuring the corner clamp wings are positioned as shown, loosely secure in place. Locate a 3.2 meter length of timber and position it down the length of your polytunnel. Depending on the length of your polytunnel, if you have been supplied with a 1.8 meter length, then this can be used first or last. Make one end flush with the end of your polytunnel. Ensuring the wing of your corner clamp is in the centre of the timber and that the timber is on the outside of the corner clamp wing. Make a mark through the hole of the corner clamp wing. Drill a hole through the mark using a 9mm timber drill bit. Push a bolt through the timber and corner clamp, ensuring the thread is on the inside of the polytunnel. Adjust the clamp to the height mark and secure with a nut. To secure the side rail to the intermediate hoop, use an intermediate clamp. Ensure your side rail is to the height mark and drill a hole through the timber on each side of the hoop using a 9mm wood drill bit. Place a bolt through each of these holes from the intermediate clamp. An arch pressing is placed over the bolts and secured in place with nuts. To add another section, you will need to join another piece of side rail to the one you have just fitted. Position a nail plate equally across the joint and secure in place using square twisted nails. You will be required to fit a nail plate to each side of the joint. Work down the length of your polytunnel joining sections of 3.2 meter long side rail and securing them to the hoops using clamps. Depending on the length of your polytunnel, if you have been supplied with a 1.8 meter length, then this can be used first or last. The side rail will exceed the length of your polytunnel and will be cut off later. We will now show you how to fit the side rail from the doorpost to the corner hoop. Using a length of timber 1.6 meters long, but an end up to the inside of the corner clamp wing. Make a mark through the hole and another mark where you are required to cut the piece in line with the doorpost. Drill a hole and cut the timber and then reposition the side rail. Secure it to the corner clamp using a washer and nut. Use the spirit level to make sure it is level to the doorpost and then use a 4mm timber drill bit to drill a pilot hole in the center of the inside edge of the doorpost through into the corner rail. Screw a 150mm screw through the hole to secure together. Reinforce the joint from the doorpost to the side rail with a nail plate and square twisted nail. Nail plates are installed on both sides of the joint. Fit the side rail from the doorpost to the corner on the opposite end of the polytunnel using the same method. Cut off the excess flush with the end of the polytunnel. Now we will install a side ventilation net. Ventilation netting is fitted from one doorpost, down the length and returns to the doorpost on the opposite end of your polytunnel. Roll out the net down the length of your polytunnel. Check that you have enough netting at each end to reach the doorpost. Start at one end, position the ventilation netting so it is flush with the top of the side rail and staple it in place.
If you have ordered timber side ventilation for both sides of your polytunnel, repeat this process on the opposite side. The next part of the process for installing the side ventilation is done once you have fitted your polytunnel cover. This is because during the process of fitting the cover, the rails are raised, the cover is attached and then the rails are lowered to add extra tension. Finishing ventilation before the cover has been fitted will hinder the process and will result in the ventilation netting becoming baggy. Please watch the video fitting the polytunnel cover to timber rails and then return to this section to perform the final fit of your ventilation netting. After your polytunnel cover has been fitted, you will be required to secure your side ventilation netting to the base rail and door post. The ventilation netting is secured to the base rail using battens. To speed up the process, we recommend pre-nailing a number of battens. Nails should be 20cm apart and should not protrude. Starting in the middle and working out to each end, pull the side ventilation netting down so it is tight and free of any wrinkles and creases. Position a batten flush with the top of the base rail and nail into place. Secure the side ventilation netting to the corner rails using the same method demonstrated earlier. You are also required to install a batten down the door frame post between the base rail and side rail. Pull the netting and secure the batten. Finally, trim off any excess ventilation netting. Repeat this second step on the opposite side of your polytunnel if you have side ventilation on both sides. You can find more videos to help you build your polytunnel and construct.firsttunnels.co.uk. We also have a construction helpline if you require any further assistance.